Hello beautiful souls, my name is Jessie and welcome back to another episode of Rewired to Inspire. This show where we'll dive into self-love, learn tangible ways to rewire the brain and discovering your soul's purpose. The goal of Rewired to Inspire is to encourage listeners to begin doing the hard work, to get curious and open to maximizing your life. Our mindset shapes how we live. Depending on life events, traumas, and personal experiences, our mindsets are all vastly different. However, one thing we all have in common is the ability to rewire our mind, to change the narrative, and to pivot our lives. I hope you leave each episode with the belief that you are so worthy to live a life true to you. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Jessie and welcome back to my podcast, Rewired to Inspire. I am so excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 114. I am having the most incredible day today and I hope that I can radiate some of that energy through my voice to you guys if maybe you're having a little bit of a harder day or in the opposite of that, maybe you're having a phenomenal day and I hope that this just allows you to continue on that trajectory. I just got back from a wonderful workshop at a local place where I learned all about composting. Sounds super, super boring, but honestly, that stuff is right up my alley, learning about sustainability, learning about you know the power that we have to make a difference in our food and in our nutrition and just for our overall environment. And it was just super amazing to be around other like-minded people, to get to be the student and to ask questions. So nonetheless, it is a beautiful, sunny spring day here in New Brunswick, and I am so excited to be jumping on here, chatting with you all. Today's episode is definitely more of a trauma-informed approach to today's content. And because I want to talk to you guys about something that I had a really hard time with for a long time. And so the topic for today is a reason why you might feel like you're tired all the time. Feeling like no matter how much sleep you get, no matter what you do, no matter what the circumstances are, you're just feeling exhausted. And although I cannot answer to every question or every circumstance or every issue that could be leading into this, if I had a guess on what one thing that I think jumps off the page for a lot of folks, it would be what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today. However, I do have to note that this is not a diagnosis of any kind. This is not a, you know, I'm saying this, so that means that you should just stop taking your medication or not go see your doctor if you're having issues with sleep. However, or if, sorry, if you're feeling tired all the time, because there could be more things going on. This is just a theme that I see quite often. And so... The reason I'm sharing this is there's really multiple reasons why I'm sharing this. A, because as always, I like to lead by example. And I like to share from experiences that I've been through, things that I've gone through, how I'm dealing with them, so I can teach them to you guys. Again, my goal as always is to help even one person not feel alone or feel empowered to make a shift in their life. And so for most of my life, I didn't really realize this until the last couple months or so, but I have been on a constant state of autopilot, on a constant state of being in a survival mechanism, meaning either hyper or hypo aroused. So my body has pretty much always, as long as I can remember, been in the state of standby, of what is to come next, ready to scan for the next threat, feeling overwhelmed, feeling out of body. And I didn't really recognize the correlation between that state of mind and being exhausted. And it hasn't really been until the past couple of months where I've kind of noticed a shift in this. And I've the first shift that I felt was when I was 22 years old and I had decided to move back to New Brunswick from Alberta. And the reason that I think that I started to feel a shift is that because at that time, it was the first time in my life I lived by myself. I didn't have external partners or people dwindling in on my emotions, I was left to be with my own thoughts and body for the first time in my whole life. And so it was the first time my body got to feel safe in an environment. And I never really realized 
how much that buildup of being in a constant state of overdrive would hit me like a ton of bricks for the years to come. And so for the past two years, I've just been constantly feeling exhausted, tired, overwhelmed. And although I think a large part of that was because most of my life was in that state, I think we also have to acknowledge in some way, shape or form that a lot of this has to do with the pandemic. And I know that this is a topic I don't really love to talk about. I don't like to give my opinion. I'm very just neutral. I don't really like to talk about it because I know it causes a lot of controversy and issues. However, what I will say is from a trauma informed standpoint, from our body neurological standpoint, the pandemic did affect us. Whether we want to acknowledge that or not, no matter which side of whatever you are on, it does not matter. We had to go on lockdown. We were uncertain, at least for a certain amount of time. Relationships could have been broken. Circumstances could have been shifted. And our body, in a way, was constantly on a state of overdrive. And so although I know my experiences are based from early on in childhood to where this started, the reason I wanted to share this is because a lot of folks that I've been talking to lately of feeling that exhaustion, it's like it's probably because your life is caught up with you, but also because the pandemic did take a toll on all of us and it's something we all experience. So that's why I'm bringing it into the conversation today. And so because for so long we were on that state of what's to come next? Like, can I go here? Can I do this? Like, is that person safe to go around? What do I do if this happens? Is my family okay? Like there was just a constant need to be on edge. And again, all of our circumstances are different. All of our experiences were different. But in some way, shape, or form, either you directly or someone you knew was feeling this way. And so what is happening to our body when that happens is we are constantly under stress. We often think, you know, I'm stressed at work or this person's stressing me out or whatever, but our body carries stress more than we might think in our mind. It carries it, it holds it, it remembers it, it's scanning for it, and it's using up so much of our beautiful energy. And you might have heard the word cortisol before. Cortisol is basically what our body releases when we are stressed. It is its way of trying to calm down our system. But the thing is, is we only have so much cortisol in our body per day. This is reproduced while we're sleeping in our adrenal glands. That is a part of that system. And it is only reproduced typically during exercise, sleep, proper nutrition. But the thing is, is when we go through these like cortisol bursts, what goes uphill must come downhill. And that is exactly what I think we're seeing with a lot of us, a feeling that hyper sense of exhaustion. We're burnt out. We're overwhelmed. We can't sleep. Everything's pissing us off. It's like, yes, which makes so much sense if we take a step back and we look at it from that approach. But I recognize that not a lot of us can do that because we don't have the education to do so, but also it's not talked about. These things aren't being talked about of how it's affecting our body and how we can heal that. Trauma healing is probably one of the least seen topics ever. When's the last time you walked in a grocery store and you looked at a magazine rack and you seen how to heal your trauma? It doesn't exist. I don't know why that is because we all have trauma. We all have things we need to heal from. We're all exhausted. We're all overdriving our systems and our systems are bound to crash. And that's what we're seeing. And so I wanted to make this episode and provide you guys with a couple things that we can do about it. And again, I am not a doctor. I am simply providing this from a self perspective with some trauma informed training and just what I've witnessed time and time again from my personal experiences and of talking with other people. One thing that I find super interesting about cortisol and about our systems is that the things that can really diminish it more is when we don't sleep, when we're over caffeinated, when we eat poorly, and when we don't exercise or move our body. But if we think about it, when we're tired, what are the things that we have the most trouble with or do too much of? We don't sleep oftentimes because we're so stressed. So that means we drink more caffeine to try to stay awake but we're so tired that we don't work out and we're so tired to cook a proper meal 
yet alone financial issues that are at game right now, no wonder our systems are going through this constant cycle. No wonder our mental health is depleting and mental illness is on the rise. And we see all these things and it's like, when are we going to halt and look at it from a bottom up approach instead of a quick fix, instead of another medication? I told my daughter, my daughter, oh my gosh, my doctor, that I was feeling this way and I was feeling extra depressed and, and extra anxious, which can be a huge indicator when we're when our cortisol is being overused. And within a 10 minute conversation, she was writing me a prescription for a drug. I'm like, I don't want that. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to communicate this so maybe I can get some blood work done and kind of get a baseline of where I'm at so I can improve from here. And again, I'm not hating on Western medicine. It's done wonderful things. But how much of our life are we just trying to smother up the issue? How much at the end of the day are we drinking, consuming our problems away? Because guess what? They're still going to be there tomorrow. And in fact, the least time we spend healing them, the more intense they're going to get and the more they're going to creep up on us. And so you listening, you are deserving of not feeling exhausted. You're deserving to feel energized, to feel a higher vibration, to feel happy, to feel joy, to feel fulfilled. But I think so many of us are in that state of shame and pain and exhaustion, which is a very, very low frequency and causing us to just question everything. And the fact that so many of us are feeling like this, guess what? That's rippling on other people. Positivity and healing and growing and evolving I truly do believe takes a community. It takes a holistic approach individually, but as well as the people around us have to be willing to acknowledge and do the work on this stuff as well. So there is hope. That is the beautiful thing. But I think that in order to make a shift, we have to know that something has shifted. In order to make a difference, we have to acknowledge what has happened. In order to know that this is happening, we have to be able to admit it to ourselves have the awareness of it, and start the conversation. That is one of the biggest things I'm passionate about with youth right now in the schools is where's your mental health? Because guess what? I know exactly what it's like to not know where to turn, to feel alone, helpless, and stuck. My goal as a coach is to help clients from a trauma-informed perspective see your worth and develop self-belief so you may chase your dreams and trust your intuition to live the most aligned, fulfilling life possible. If you're looking to elevate your life to the next level but aren't sure where to start, I would absolutely love to connect. If you're feeling pulled or curious, please use the link in the show notes below to book your free call. I look forward to connecting and supporting you on your own unique journey. My manager told me yesterday, one of the biggest issues that we're seeing in schools is having to do with logic, with math, with calculus, with science, with those things. And I'm like, no, duh, that makes perfect sense to my brain because guess what? Our logic brain, our hippocampus, which is where we're able to do math, do statistics, do physics, do logic thinking, comes from our hippocampus, but guess what? If that is turned off because we are too stressed or we're in a state of survival, of course those things are gonna seem super hard and we're gonna fail. It makes perfect sense to me. And I get really worked up about these things because it's like, why are we not taking a trauma-informed perspective to this? Why are we not educating the general public about how trauma lies in the body, about how the pandemic did affect us, about how cortisol is this beautiful thing that is there to help us in instances when we have a need to react. If there is a bear chasing me in the woods, you're damn right I want that cortisol to help me run faster. But I don't need that running through my body when I'm sitting at my laptop writing an email. Do you see the difference? And do you see how one of them is going to be detrimental and is going to catch up to us? My goal of today is to provide you guys with some things that we can do but to really hammer in your noggin the importance and the significance of not turning a blind eye, of recognizing, checking in on our friends, checking in on each other, checking in on ourselves of, huh, am I just really, really overwhelmed? Mindfulness, yoga, breath work, those things hold so much power. And I know that they sound woo-woo. I know that they sound crazy, 
but I don't know about you, but I'd rather look crazy doing a meditation than be dealing with hyper anxiety for the rest of my life. So I want you to know that wherever you're at right now, that is amazing. You are here. You are listening. I'm so, so happy that you're here and we can make a shift. We can make a difference. We can do this, but it has to start with a conversation of even knowing that it's happening because it's hard to fix something and tend to something if you don't even know what's going on. So without further ado, what can we do about this, Jesse? What do we do? The first thing is kind of like I just said, and it's to acknowledge that it's happening. Don't turn a blind eye. Don't be ignorant about it. It is happening. It is affecting you. It is affecting me. It is affecting our community. It is affecting our families. In which capacity, that is going to be unique to all of us. Maybe you already have amazing grounding techniques that you're using. Perfect. Maybe you already have great healing things that you're using, going to therapy, doing all the things. Amazing. For most of us, we don't have those things. We're not doing those things because we don't have time, resources, energy to do so. So the first thing is to acknowledge that this is happening. Acknowledge why you're feeling that way. Acknowledge why you might be feeling that way. So we can start to dot our I's and cross our T's. The second thing, start to identify your daily stressors. This one's going to be huge. So start to identify every time throughout the day, you start to feel overwhelmed or stressed. Something that's been helpful for me with this is every time I'm feeling stressed or overwhelmed, I'll go and I'll write my to-do list. Because if I know I have everything on paper, it's right here in front of me if you're watching video, I know if I have everything right there in front of me, I don't have to keep stressing about it in my mind. I know I can get to it one at a time because that's all we can do as humans. But starting to identify your stressors, maybe your coworker stresses you out, maybe money stresses you out, maybe the drive to work stresses you out, whatever it is, identify all of them, let it have light, let it come into your consciousness. If it's not in our consciousness and we're not acknowledging it's stressing us out, we can't do anything and really build the tools and tips to tend to it. So that is the second thing. The third, begin to heal your past. If you have not yet in your life, or even if you have at one point, seen a therapist, talked to a counselor, done anything of that realm, I cannot acknowledge, or sorry, encourage you more to do that. Seeing a therapist was probably the best decision of my life. And I am right now in the process of finding an aligned therapist again, because guess what? The healing journey does not end. It doesn't end. It's always gonna be different. We're always going to have issues. We're always going to have things. And the thing about therapy that's amazing is that it gives us a place that is really self-centered in the best way. Where the therapist on the other end is not there for their benefit, but instead to have undivided time on you to focus on you and to help you heal. But the thing is, is if we've just stuffed down our life experiences for our whole life, we've stuffed down our pain, we've stuffed down our traumas, they're staying in our body and they're coming out in little ways. It's like a crack in a foundation. If you run water through it, it's going to find a way to leak out. Our trauma in our body is doing the same thing, but we might not even realize it. It could be affecting our sleep. It could be affecting our mood. It could be affecting our digestion, our skin, just our overall vibe as a person. But I don't think we realize these things because it's so normalized to have those symptoms. Oh, that's just a part of life. Oh, that's just a part of being a woman. Oh, that's just a part of your 20s. Oh, that's just this. That's just that. No. It's invalid education about how it actually affects our body and our minds, you guys. It, this stuff just pees me off so much. One of the most empowering things I've ever learned about in my life is how trauma lives in the mind and in the body. Okay, number four. Nourish your body as best as possible. I know Doritos are good. I know chocolate bars are good. I, trust me. I know. I know all about it. But what I also know is that our body needs proper nutrition to heal and to work to its best capacity. If we are just constantly feeding our body garbage, it is going to feel like garbage. It is not going to be operating properly because it doesn't have the things that it needs to properly look after us and tend to us. Proper vitamins are also huge. I don't want you to go out and follow any kind of diet or follow what your favorite YouTuber is doing or you've seen on a cover of a magazine. I want you to get to know your unique body because what you need and what I need is going to be completely different. And you will know the foods that make your mind feel good, that make your body feel good. You will know those things intuitively, 
but we have to make it a priority as best as possible to nourish our body so it can heal from the inside out. Speaking of which, my stomach is growling. I highly doubt you guys can hear that, but if you can, that is my body's way of saying, hey, you haven't fed me in a couple hours and I'm really hungry. So I'm really grateful that I have leftovers from last night that I can make. So long story short. <laughs> okay, the next thing you guys, I'm almost done. Move your body as best as possible. That could be a quick 10 minute walk. That could be a yoga flow. That could be a full on workout. My favorite word to throw in front of moving your body and exercising is intentional, intentional movement. I know that for the next X amount of time, this time is going to be me intentionally moving, nourishing, doing something for my body. That word intentional allows us to show up differently. It allows us to do it differently. Moving your body as best as possible is one of the best things that we can do on a daily basis. It is going to help our, again, cortisol heal and to work better. It's gonna allow us to come back to our body and feel grounded. It's going to work our heart in a healthy way. It's going to force us in a way to focus on our breathing. Working out and moving our body is one of the most underrated I think cures of so many things, especially if it's in the summer and you can get outside for a walk and also get vitamin D at the same time. There's so many unique ways that you can move and nourish your body without it being a full weightlifting session at the gym. Don't let society's representation of what moving your body is supposed to look like intimidate you and take you away from doing the things that would work and be beneficial for you in your life, but finding a way every single day to intentionally move your beautiful body. Number six, and you guys are probably gonna roll your eyes at this one, prioritize your sleep. We all need at least eight hours of sleep. And I know women actually need more than men, which was a whole other can of worms that I've been learning about. But women on average need eight hours of sleep. Men on average need six to eight hours of sleep. Women specifically, it's because the way our hormones are produced is in our sleep men's hormones are produced 24 hours a day. And so we need more sleep than men do. And I don't know everything that goes into that. I'm learning more about it, about how our hormones are operated and, and when they have time to recover versus men. So I'm not gonna dive super deep into it because I'm not fully knowledgeable, but I do know that that is really the baseline of why women need more sleep. Not to mention where we're at in our cycle, all these other things that are at play. But we need to prioritize our sleep. I know it can be hard at the end of a long day because it's like, this is me time. This is time that I just want to watch TV and just relax. I hear you and I get that. But think about that how, or think about how that's pouring into your tomorrow. I often ask myself when it's starting to get late, will tomorrow thank me for this? And if the answer is no, then I know what I should be doing. Prioritizing my sleep has been a game changer I've been starting to not bring my phone into the bedroom so it does not go past the door of my bedroom. It is my sacred place to really avoid technology, to just focus on my sleep. I have my sound machine, I have my essential oils. It's really just become this safe, sacred place for me to focus on raising my energy, replenishing myself for tomorrow so I can show up even better. Sleep is such a magnificent thing. And again, one of the reasons you might be tired is because of that stress, which could be stopping you from sleeping. So I encourage you to find ways to ground yourself that support you so you can begin to prioritize your sleep, which I promise you in some way, shape or form will help lower your stress, help you have more energy. And last but not least, acknowledge that this is okay and that your body is trying its best. This is always like my ending point that I like to share because we do have to acknowledge that our body is doing exactly what it's kind of supposed to do. If we're feeling stressed, that's cortisol's job to come in and protect us. If we're feeling overwhelmed, that's our body's job to kind of pull the ripcord and to turn our thinking brain offline. Everything it's doing does serve a purpose, but has that purpose extended its time period? Has it overstayed its welcome in a way? And what can we do from our perspective and within our power to start to heal that so our body can relax and go back to doing what it does best, which is looking after us and doing all the things internally. So you guys, 
that is a reason why you might be feeling tired all the time, I want you to just take a moment to maybe put your hand on your heart. Maybe just take a deep breath and go, okay, this is where I'm at. How I pivot from this moment on is my decision. You have the power in this moment to choose. Are you going to keep going in the cycle you're going on? Or are you going to allow this to just give you some new awareness of how you could be living differently? What could be happening internally? Maybe that's seeking resources, calling that therapist, calling your doctor, whatever it is. What is your next step after this? Only you will know what that thing is. Only you will know how this aligns for you. But I truly hope you know that you're not alone in feeling this way. It is okay. It is what's got you to where you are. You deserve to feel energized and to live the most aligned, fulfilling life. So thank you guys so, so much as always for tuning into episode 114 of Rewire to Inspire. If you're looking to connect, you can find me on Instagram at jessiebrown13. If you're looking to book a free 30-minute call, I would absolutely love to connect with you. The link is in the description below. Feel free to click that, pick a date, and I would be more than excited to jump on Zoom with you, have a conversation, and see how I might be a good fit for you as a coach and or just to have a conversation with a like-minded individual. So without further ado, I hope you guys have an amazing, amazing day, and I look forward to chatting with you all next week. Bye, you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's episode of Rewire to Inspire. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next episode. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.